When Shovel Knight was released by Yacht Club Games in 2014, it instantly became one of my absolute favorite indie games, and then held that status through several expansions. And now, after years of yelling at people to play Shovel Knight, Yacht Club Games is working with other developers to bring him and his shovel to other genres, like the dungeon crawling puzzle hybrid, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Hey everyone, and welcome to X-Play's review of Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, which is super exciting for a whole bunch of reasons. Because one, it's my first real X-Play review, which I'm nerding out about in case you can't tell. But also, because it's for a franchise that I am deeply connected with. In the name of full disclosure, I should mention that I am relatively good friends with the folks at Yacht Club Games. But my admiration for the franchise came long before I knew them. I truly love what they've created with the Shovel Knight franchise, from the world, to the characters, to each and every sequel and expansion. So a dungeon crawler with puzzle elements set in that universe is just exactly what I want. Because the only thing better than a dungeon is one that can fit in your pocket. All the best things in life are pocket sized friends. Your phone, candy, Adam Sessler. Hey Adam, what's up? Hey Gerard, look at you doing your first X-Play review. Don't mess it up. Uh, thanks Adam, uh, I'll, I'll do my best. And yes, that's where the cesspool is located, right in my pocket. That's canon now, folks. Enjoy. Shovel Knight was first released by Yacht Club Games in 2014 with a campaign that has retroactively been dubbed Shovel of Hope. It was followed up by a series of expansion campaigns like Plague of Shadows, Spectre of Torment, King of Cards, and even a full-blown platform fighting game known as Shovel Knight Showdown. All of that was bundled into one gigantic pack called Shovel Knight Treasure Trove in 2019, which makes sense as a name because the games are true gems. Now, I am not sorry for that pun or for any future pun, now until forever, in perpetuity. Deal with it. After making a killer game and some great expansions though, Yacht Club Games is now opening up the Shovel Knight franchise by working with other developers like Vine to co-create spin-offs like Pocket Dungeon. And before you say anything, no, not that Vine. The dungeons in Pocket Dungeon are small, but they still take longer than six seconds, unless I'm doing something very wrong. At first glance, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon looks like a straight up puzzle game in the vein of Dr. Mario or Tetris but it ends up being at least as much of a roguelike dungeon crawler, like Hades or Enter the Gungeon. When the titular Shovel Knight gets sucked into the titular pocket dungeon, he encounters a new character named Puzzle Knight, along with the entire cast of knights throughout the entire franchise. The player can then unlock those knights by beating them after fighting through an assortment of worlds based on levels from the first game. But which knights show up when is completely random, and the game has a classic roguelike structure that really emphasizes the dungeon part of Pocket Dungeon. And honestly, I was really impressed by how the game scales down the feeling of an entire dungeon to fit into an 8x8 grid. It makes the pocket-sized nature of the game into a feature. And although I sometimes felt like the game's bite-sized nature worked against it, the main gameplay feels really dense and rich, in spite of its small scale. Unlike when we shrunk Adam down to fit into my pocket and it felt like something got lost in the process. Are you talking about me? It's really hard to hear anything in here. See what I mean? Poor little guy. Welcome to X-Play, I'm Sessler. Clearing dungeons in Pocket Dungeon means chaining kills together to wipe out as many enemies as you can all at once. Knowing that when you do damage to them, they also deal damage back to you equal to whatever their strength is. It's extremely simple in concept and barely requires any button presses outside of directional inputs. But in practice, it's fast and chaotic. And feels like it somehow boiled an entire genre down to just those four cardinal directions. That's four fewer directions than chess has. You heard it here first, folks. Shovel my pocket dungeon is harder and more complicated than chess. Okay, fine, maybe not, but give it another 500 years and we'll see because this is definitely a game that does a lot with a little. The basics of the gameplay loop will feel familiar to anyone who has played roguelikes before, especially the relics, which can either be purchased for a run or unlocked so that they'll have a chance to appear randomly in future runs. 
These are purchased from Chester, the treasure chest loving merchant from the other games, because this series loves puns almost as much as I do. Almost. There's a lot to unlock and pretty much everyone from the Shovel Knight franchise reappears in this game. As a longtime fan, I appreciated the level of detail here, even if I ended up unlocking everyone really quickly. Same goes for the music, which remixes tracks from the original, but to an extent that makes them feel completely brand new. So if you've never played a Shovel Knight game before, I think all the tracks and levels will still be very charming, and all the characters will still come across as adorable and cleverly designed, especially considering the art style is way different from the original Shovel Knight franchise. Something that Yacht Club Games does really well is design characters with mechanics and intent that are really bizarre and weird that you end up loving. Take Percy for instance, the scholarly horse boy who is extremely helpful in this game because he operates a cannon that can be used to fast travel to specific worlds once you've paid to unlock those shortcuts. Fast travel is all well and good, but I especially love when it's flavored in a weird and memorable way and being launched out of a cannon by a horse will always be way cooler and more specific than just teleporting somewhere on a map randomly. Wouldn't you agree, Pocket Adam? Wait, 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 wait. Am I a separate smaller Adam Sessler or do I change size depending on which set I'm on? I, 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 I think the lore here is getting really confusing. You know, Adam, that's a great question. The people demand answers, Gerard. Okay, I demand an answer. There are 13 playable knights in the game and they all feel very different from each other. Shovel Knight is the standard, more well-rounded character, but there are weirder ones like Plague Knight, who I still haven't figured out how to be good with, or Spectre Knight, who heals when he kills an enemy, but can't touch potions, which I kept forgetting since I was used to just grabbing potions on autopilot, but oh well. Easily my favorite though has to be Propeller Knight, and not just because I already thought he was cool. When he kills isolated enemies, his strength stat temporarily goes up by one until he gets a chain kill, which means that if you play it smart, he can just absolutely melt enemies at instant speed that almost feels unfair, but in a good way. The various knights and their different play styles are amazing, but I felt like I unlocked everything in my first couple of hours within the game. And sure, the game is meant to be pocket sized, but the balance felt slightly off. Like I didn't have time to ease myself into learning each new character because suddenly they were just all there. And even though I felt like I had a pretty good grasp on how playing Pocket Dungeon worked, I had to relearn how to get good with each specific knight because this game can be surprisingly hard depending on which mode you play it on. But hey, options. Who doesn't love options? The choices are single stock mode and infinite stock mode, and I definitely had a preference because single stock was a little too difficult, even for a self-proclaimed Shovel Knight pro like myself. In single stock mode, the run ends when you die. Which can happen with shocking speed if you aren't really careful, especially as enemies start filling the screen faster and faster. It's easy to make that mistake and then suddenly, whoops, Sorry, game over. Infinite stock mode, on the other hand, feels more balanced to me in spite of having the word infinite in the name. Because you can still fail and die if the screen fills with too many enemies. But now if you run out of health, you just take some time to respawn, which increases the risk of getting swarmed. But it also allows for sick comebacks. And anyone who has ever played a puzzle game like this, including Tetris, knows how empowering it is to clear a nearly full screen. It's better than drugs. Or, or so I assume. Leave me alone! I just called Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon a puzzle game, and that's because it definitely is. But it's less about solving things than surviving things, which is where the dungeon crawling vibe comes into play. In order to open chests and doors, you need to collect keys. And in order to afford relics or items, you need to be efficient with your chain kills and grab chests, but the emphasis is definitely on reacting quickly rather than thoughtfully considering your next move, which makes it feel novel as both a puzzle game and a dungeon crawler. And there's a big piece to this puzzle that thankfully isn't missing, which is more than I can say for pretty much any physical puzzle I've ever tried to assemble. But I'm talking about a versus mode because hell yes, this game has a versus mode which means you can play against a friend or a partner or a tiny co-host who lives in your pocket. Here you go, Adam. Get in there, come on. And... Oh, wow, I, I, I guess stuff like this just changes sizes when you put it inside the pocket? 
because you didn't think it was just going to crush me to death, didn't you, Gerard? Uh, let's just play. Oh, well, that was fun. Here you go, Gerard. Yeah. I guess I thought it would grow back to full size. Bummer. Versus matches in Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon can end pretty quickly if you're not careful, as you just saw. But the characters all play very differently that it's really going to come down to which knight you use and how you approach using them. Versus mode also strips away some of the roguelike elements, but not all of them. There are still keys to collect and items that can be purchased, and if both players are in the zone, they can progress deep into the depths of the pocket dungeon before one of them dies. It's in Versus mode, though, that the game feels most like the fast-paced puzzle game that it looks like at first glance. It's still about trying to survive a chaotic dungeon full of enemies, but knowing that you're competing against another person makes winning that much more satisfying. But much like the single player mode, I wanted just a dash more content, some extra modes or something, just to pad out the multiplayer elements and make them feel a little more substantial. That said though, the dungeon crawling roguelike elements are definitely the meat and potatoes of the game. And the versus matches are like a dessert, like a brownie or a cookie, still great, but not the main reason that I showed up to the restaurant to begin with. Unless it's a place that's known for desserts, I guess? I admit, this metaphor is not perfect. Doing great, Gerard. Oh, thanks, Adam. Shovel Knight as a character is near and dear to my heart, and I've made no secret about how great I think the folks over at Yacht Club Games are. But all that aside, I'm still pretty blown away by how Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon manages to deliver exactly what I want from a puzzle game and exactly what I want from a dungeon crawler at the exact same time. And sure, it doesn't hurt that it's built around characters and worlds that I'm already familiar with, but the word pocket in the title refers to more than just Adam Sessler. In fact, it's basically the game's mission statement. If I can further distort that restaurant metaphor from earlier, it's like a delicious snack instead of a heavy meal. Able to be played in quick bursts while still creating the feeling that you're constantly making progress by accumulating characters and relics. Now look, your mileage may vary, especially if you've never played a Shovel Knight game before, but Pocket Dungeon still does such a great job at being a lightning fast version of both roguelikes and puzzle games that I'd have no qualms about recommending it to fans of either genre. And then if any of the characters like Propeller Knight seem super cool to you, you can always check out the other Shovel Knight games and hopefully become obsessed as I am. Which is why Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon gets our rating of... Whoa, 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 Adam. I was kind of hoping to do the rating myself, that's okay. As a longtime X-Play fan, it's sort of a big deal to me right now. Oh, I get it. Big deal. Because I'm, I'm tiny. Okay, how about this? You can do the score, assuming we never do this tiny Adam bit again. I can't make that promise, Adam. I said it was canon after all, and now they all know. But I will try my best. Fine. Deal. Great. As I was saying, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon is a quick experience, but an absolute delight, which is why we give it a four out of five. Thanks for watching this bite-sized review of this bite-sized game. And be sure to let us know what you think of this or any other roguelike in the comments down below. We always love hearing from you folks. And if you wanna watch more of our content, check out our review of Inscription or take a look at the Horizon franchise with us. Bye from both me and Tiny Adam.